scripture. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 4, the text says, Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these work at that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man separately as he will. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink in to one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you for the truth that is contained in the pages of Scripture. Jesus said in his high priestly prayer, Father, sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is true. And may we come into the knowledge and understanding of the things that have been written therein, that we might prosper in the way and bring glory to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. Praise God. Now, we're just going, amen, to deal with a particular topic on tonight. Amen. Coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Praise God. And ultimately, I'm going to get um, to all the nine gifts of the Spirit, as well as the gifts of administration and the diversity of operations, ministries of helps, and so forth and so forth. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about in verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Praise God. Now, we all... Remember that in order for anyone to have access to the gifts of the Spirit, you must become a member of the body of Christ. You must be a recipient of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Because without that, you can never have access into the nine gifts. Praise God. Hallelujah. In verse number 10, the Apostle Paul brings out the gift of discerning of spirits. Praise God. And I believe that it is very necessary that in this last day, that we pray for the gift of discerning of spirits. Now, if you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have no access to any of the nine gifts. Praise God. Amen. But I am speaking to those who have been filled with the Holy Ghost and they have their spiritual prayer language in operation within their Life, Praise God. And the Apostle Paul says to the saints of God in the text, he said how God has given to every one of us gifts as he desires. Praise God. But the one that I want to kind of deal with on tonight is the gift of discerning of spirits. Praise God. And we need to know how important this spiritual gift is. Praise God. Because whether you know it or not, there are unclean spirits that are masquerading themselves. They are hiding behind the scenes in many segments of our society. 
They are hiding themselves within places of government, even within the hierarchy of the Christian church. Praise God. Now, if you don't have spiritual discernment, you will never know what is happening. I see people all the time just guess. Amen. They don't have the revelation gift of discerning of spirits, but they just guess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Amen. I've heard a lot of people say on many occasions how they had discernment. But they don't understand what the scripture says concerning the gift of discerning of spirits. Praise God. Now understand that when you come into the knowledge of the truth that is written in God's word, it grants you a level or a measure of discernment. But that is not the gift of discerning of spirits because it is a revelation gift. Praise God. It is when the Holy Spirit began to reveal, when he began to unfold and begin to show you unclean spirits that are masquerading or hiding behind the scenes. You, will, you and your own self would never be able to detect them. Praise God. Because if you could, then there would be no need for this supernatural gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. There are many spirits that are at work in our world. Now you have to understand there are some demons that are not masquerading themselves. There are some demons that are not hiding behind the scenes. And yes, you can detect them. <coughs> it doesn't take the gift of discerning of spirits to detect some demons that are not masquerading themselves or hiding behind the scenes. Praise God. This is why this spiritual gift is important because there are unclean spirits that are masquerading themselves and hiding behind the scenes and yet you don't understand that it is them igniting the warfare in the background. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Now I know in this end time Christian church we have a lot of people that think they are so smart. Hallelujah. But I just haven't found anybody smarter than God. Amen. Amen. The, the things that they say and the things that they believe seem to don't line up with scripture. So therefore, I choose to believe the word of God because it's always accurate. Hallelujah. Amen. You can dismiss anything that man says that does not agree with scripture. For the prophet said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because they have no light in them. Praise God. And when you speak the word of God, you must have understanding of the things that you are saying. You can't just say it. You got to have understanding. Praise God. Because when somebody asks you of the reasonable hope that's within you and you can't even answer them, then it's because you have actually no understanding within you. Amen. Amen? So it's important to have knowledge and understanding. Praise God. Now, the text says here how the Holy Ghost has a supernatural gift called discernment. And the word discern means to perceive or to detect. And this is something that is done supernaturally. You can't do it in your own senses. And how many know God has gave, given man five senses? Amen. Your five senses is not the Holy Ghost. Come on. Just because you can sit some things, uh, praise God, that is not what the scripture is talking about. Because if we really had spiritual discernment, we wouldn't be in a terrible spiritual condition like we are. Because we would have been able to detect a lot of the rhetoric. We would have been able to detect a lot of the lies. We would have been able to detect a lot of these demon spirits that have been attacking us for so long. Hallelujah. You would have been able to pick them up. Amen. And you wouldn't be in the place
place where you are now. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now, I know some of us don't like this, praise God, but that's just how it is. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen. Now, let, let me go to a couple of scriptures here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Ephesians <clears throat> chapter 6, Verse 10 through 12. Amen. Amen. This is a very familiar verse that the Apostle Paul brings out concerning the nature of spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. He says, beginning in verse number 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. Now I want you to remember he's talking to spirit filled people. He's talking to members of the body of Christ. He goes on to say to them put on the whole armor of God. Now this is why he brings this out because they are the ones who have access to this spiritual armor. Praise God. If you have never been baptized with the Holy Ghost, then you don't have access to put on the armor of God in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But yet he says to them that are members of the body of Christ, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise God. Now we can see the nature of the battle. It is a spiritual war. Praise God. Now, if we're going to be successful in warfare, then we need some intelligence. Hallelujah. And one of the areas of intelligence that we need so desperately is the gift of discerning of spirits. Praise God. Because it's going to aid us in the war. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Even in the natural, there are countries that send spies to other countries. Amen. And their job is to what? Infiltrate. Glory to God. And when many times when they infiltrate other countries, praise God, they begin to move among the population, praise God, and as if they are a citizen of that nation. Come on. Hallelujah. They have ID. They have the language down. Almost everything. Praise God. And one of the reasons for that spy maneuvering among them of another nation is, praise God, to find out its secrets and then report it back to its nation in which it came because you got to understand in warfare, if you want to gain an advantage over your enemy, you got to infiltrate. Praise God. So that you can what? Destroy it from within. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. And this is why nations always have certain people in the background watching people. Hallelujah. Because they know there are enemies among us. And they look like us. You know, kind of what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. He said, beware of false prophets, for they come to you as wolves in sheep's clothing. But they appear to be one of you. Hello? And you know, we, we, we just seem to just can't detect these fellas. Because, you know, they sound good. They looking good. They on time for service. They come. They come to prayer meeting. They seem to be very nice. They even got a dance. Come on, Hallelujah! Praise God. 
But let me tell you something. When you have the gift of discerning of spirits, God will pull the mask off and let you see who the imposters are. Amen. Come on. Because we got many of them in the pulpit. We got many of them in the pulpit. Hallelujah. We got many of them in choirs and praise teams. We have many of them scattered throughout congregations, throughout the world. Glory to God. Satan has certainly infiltrated the church. Glory to God. And demon hordes are coming in like a flood and they are masquerading themselves to the point this is why you see much of the church in a cold condition. You can't see the climate change within the church. There was a time when the church was on Holy Ghost fire. Amen. Come on. And when I say Holy Ghost fire, don't you dare get it mixed up. Because just because a, a particular a church or ministry is jumping and shouting, that does not mean they're on Holy Ghost fire. Because you can jump and shout and still be mean when you get done. You can jump and shout and still be stubborn and rebellious. You can jump and shout and still be, praise God, amen, sinning like everybody else. That's not a church that's on Holy Ghost fire. Praise God. Because you forgot that the devil can copycat the fire of God. It's called strange fire. It looked like Holy Ghost fire, but it's an imitation. But when the people have become so dumb down in the church, we don't know the difference between the Holy Ghost fire and strange fire. We don't know the difference from the anointing of God and a counterfeit anointing. We don't know the difference between a true prophet and a false prophet. We don't even know the difference. Because to us, they, it all looks the same. And this is why the Apostle John brought, brought it out in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through verse number 6. He said, believe not every spirit. And you got to remember, there are many spirits. Come on, there's only one true spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks us to worship him. Praise God. Any spirit outside of the Holy Spirit is a counterfeit. Come on. I don't care what it looks like. Hallelujah. If it ain't lining up with the word of God, it's a counterfeit. Hello, somebody. And we got to get some discernment in this hour because this is how the devil is throwing curveballs and fastballs. And we seem to striking. We, we, we striking out of when we all be knocking the ball out the park, praise God, he's striking us out. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, he's throwing curveballs and screwballs, and we, we, we betting at every one of them and missing. Some of us trying to guess, and some of us ain't trying to do nothing because, you know, we, we're not really that spiritual. So, you know, anything can get past us because it doesn't even matter to us because everything looks the same to us. Hello, somebody. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And this is why we're not able to pick up these spirits that are coming in amongst us. Glory to God. Yes, these spirits are working in every segment of our society. They're working in government. We're not looking at that. You know why? Because we figure because we're not a politician that we don't need to go that far. Well, my brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, that there's spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, they are in high places of government, uh, working behind presidents uh, and kings and prime ministers, uh, senators and congressmen. Uh, praise God. Uh, but you know what? We don't pay that any attention because, you know, we'll say, well, that ain't got nothing to do with me, but you are very misinformed uh, because when you live in a particular Thank you. 
Come on. Amen. That's why you got to watch out for these people. They so, they so heavenly minded. They no earthly good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be heavenly minded, but don't be so heavenly minded where you try to excuse much of what goes on down here. Amen. Amen. Do you not live down here? Praise God that you need to be concerned about what goes on down here because it's going to affect you, it's going to affect your children and your way of life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, sir. There are spiritual wickedness in high places operating in government. Huh? Yes, sir. But you know, we can't pick those things up because we're not paying any attention. Glory to God. We're only concerned about the carnal things of this wicked world. All we think we got to do is believe in Jesus and we find. Hallelujah. You got that one wrong. Hallelujah. Because if you believe in Jesus, then this same Jesus is going to call you to prayer. He's going to call you, amen, to, to get in the pages of Scripture so you can study, so he can open up your mind, praise God, so you can see what is actually going on. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. It ain't just, I believe in Jesus, and that's it. And that's all a lot of people think. All you got to do is believe in Jesus, and that's it. You know, a lot of people in the world believe in Jesus, but they still ain't saved. They still ain't delivered. Come on, when you believe in Jesus, something supernatural gonna take place. Come on. Ain't that what he said in John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39? Praise God. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This speak he of the Holy Ghost. Come on. And everyone that believes on Jesus Christ will become a recipient of the Holy Ghost. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And in my name they shall cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. These are people that have become recipients of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And I'm going to understand. You need the Holy Ghost. Because without it, you can never access these spiritual gifts. Hello? The apostle brings out how the spirit divides the every man separately as he will. And yet if God has not blessed you with the gift of discerning the spirits, you can get in prayer and fasting and petition him. Amen. Come on. Because God wants you to have it. What scripture says, covet the best gifts. Praise God. But he wants you to have this gift because it's necessary. Amen. Amen. This is why the devil is getting an advantage over us within the Christian church. Didn't the Apostle Paul bring that out? In 2 Corinthians, I'm going to read that. 2 Corinthians, <coughs> praise God. 2 Corinthians, <coughs> Chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 10 and verse 11, it says, To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Praise God. Did you see that? Amen. Is that written in the text? Amen. You don't want Satan to get a what? Advantage over you. Come on. Amen. And I believe, praise God, that it is needful that we begin to seek God in prayer. And, and there are times God is going to call you to turn the plate over. Because we need to possess this spiritual gift within our hearts. Amen. So that we can what? Expose these devils. Because they're not only in high places of government. It's also in your homes. It's in the school system. It's in the community. And it's in the church. And yes, there are many unclean spirits that are masquerading themselves and hiding behind the scenes. And you will never know where they're located unless the spirit of God reads. Now, I don't want nobody going outside of the, 
word of God and talking about what well, God showed me this and da 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 da. People are always saying stuff that's so unscriptural. Amen. Praise God. They can't even see the sin they in within they within their personal lives. They can't even see the motes that are in their own eye, let alone refuse to pull them out. But all of a sudden, God just shows them everything because they want to look spiritual in front of people. They want to look deep in front of the people. Praise God. And yet they can't even get some of the small uh, things in their life right. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. So you got to watch out for them Pharisees in the church. You got to watch out for them. You got to watch out for them, praise God, because they are everywhere. They're the pulpit. They're the choir. They're on praise teams. They are within congregations throughout the nations of the world. You got to be watchful. Praise God. See, you just got, this thing just got to be done as it is written in the scriptures. See, I believe everything must be done by the book. Come on. See, that's what makes you right. That's what makes you legal when you do it by the book. Come on. Anything that is done and it is not by the book, that's what makes you corrupt. You know why policemen are corrupt? But many of them have made up laws as they went. Right. The, the law can say, you can do this and do that. And the policeman will say, well, I don't care what the law said. I said, because he's the policeman, I said, even though he's speaking against the law that's already been established in the book. Right. Because they have laws downtown that they are to abide by. Amen. They're not to transgress them. They are to abide by. They are to uphold. The Bible talks about the gifts of what? Discerning of spirits. Praise God. Listen to the apostle in Ephesians chapter 5. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 5. He's worthy to be praised. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 5 beginning at verse 11. He said, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Praise God. The word reprove means to expose or to proactively protest against it. Amen. Now, we want to expose some demons. There are some uh, unclean spirits that has to be detected first. Now, there are some demons, praise God, that are not masquerading or hiding themselves. Praise God. But there are some unclean spirits that you are not even aware of that is in the atmosphere. They are in the room. And you don't even know it. Come on. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. And this is what the Bible teaches us. Because we have to know these things, my brothers and sisters, lest we be deceived. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't it amazing how somebody can break into your home and hide? And you can come home and not even know they're there. But thank God for that dog. Come on. That dog can detect them. That dog, amen, can smell them. That dog there's an intruder in this house and they begin to go through the house and they begin to find the culprit and then they begin to bark they begin to bark come on somebody praise God you hear what I'm saying 
the scriptures say in the book of Jude how ungodly men will creep in unaware. Now, why does anybody know who they are? Why don't anybody know who they are? Huh? Amen. Come on. Why don't you know who they are? Because you've been, you've been knowing them all your life. Hallelujah. So they can't be wrong because it's somebody you've been knowing all your life. Because it's your relative. Praise God. How many know you can't look at that? Amen. You got to look at the word of God because the word of God will expose any and everybody. Amen. And it don't care if you're black, white, brown, or red. It don't care if you're male or female. And it don't care if you are biological family member or a friend. Come on, somebody. Amen. Didn't he say that? In the book of Jude, chapter 1 and verse 4, how certain men crept in unaware. Now, how did they get in there? And nobody know they're in there. Hallelujah. Amen. They bring in all this damnable doctrine in privately. How are they able to do that? Because there's no discernment. Hallelujah. There is no true Holy Ghost discernment flowing in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the reason for that is, is because many have gotten off their knees. They don't pray anymore. Prayers become a fad. Fasting has become an old thing. Hallelujah. Studying the Bible has become a pastime. Hallelujah. And when you praise God, uh, uh, go, when, when you cease from doing these things that are needful, all you do is open up doors for unclean spirits to come in and invade us. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. That's how it is. I'm sorry. That's how it is. Then you wonder how they bring in all these, uh, these, these damnable doctrines. Ain't that what he said in 2 Peter? Did he say that in 2 Peter chapter 2? Praise God. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 3. There were false prophets in, among you, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately bring in damnable heresy, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of evil shall be spoken of. The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Praise God. Praise God. Did you see that? Yeah. Now how did they get in there? Because there's no true Holy Ghost deserving. Yeah. Come on. We too busy just having some church. And we don't even understand what that means. Because we think it's just doing a lot of dancing and running around the church and shouting. But ain't nobody praying. Ain't nobody living right. Don't nobody love one another. Don't nobody care about nobody. All you see is a bunch of lip service, people talking, saying what they believe, saying what they do, and they don't do anything they say they do, and they don't even practice what they say they believe. Amen. Praise God. They may know in their heart that these things is right, but because they're still in the flesh, this is why they can't carry the word of God out within their personal lives. Come on. And yet, have anything. Still ain't delivered. Still ain't set free. Still don't have the Holy Ghost. Still don't have the love of God within your heart. Still don't have any care for your brother or your sister. Come on. Still disobedient. Still won't submit to leadership. But you had some church. What a, what, what a fool the devil is making many in the church. Huh? He's making a fool out of many within the church. Many that say that Jesus is their Lord, but obviously he's not. Because when Jesus is your Lord, that means, praise God, you submit yourself to obey him wholeheartedly. There's no if, and, buts about it. Praise God. How many know we got to stop all the lip service? Honoring God with our lips. Drawing not to him with our mouths. But our hearts is far. Him. That's all you see, the 
today. It's a bunch of lip service. Amen. But the text teaches us in Ephesians 5 and verse 11, he said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, expose them. And how I many know we're going to have to have the gift of discerning the spirits to expose some devils that we actually don't know are lurking behind the scenes. Amen. Now, there's some unclean spirits you, you can pick up. Praise God. Because they're not masquerading themselves. Hallelujah. They are out in the open. They are manifesting themselves so clearly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you got any biblical sense, you can tell what kind of spirit it is. Hallelujah. How many know there's a lot of different spirits in the scriptures? Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. We can deal with the Jezebel spirit. Hallelujah. And there are many verses of scripture that we can go to. One of them is 1 Kings chapter 21. Praise God. Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit is a spirit of control. It is a dominating spirit. It is a male dominating spirit. Hello, somebody. The Jezebel spirit is a black widow. It is a murdering spirit. The Jezebel spirit hates male leadership. She hates the prophets of God. She would do anything to erode their leadership. Hallelujah. You understand? The spirit of Jezebel is witchcraft. Amen. Anytime someone possesses this spirit, you ain't gonna never have no peace. You're never gonna have any peace. In the church, you're not going to have any peace in the home. You ain't going to have any peace wherever this spirit is. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because this spirit come to tear down. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 14, a wise woman, she builds her house, but a foolish woman, that's a Jezebel right there, she tears it down. <laughs> Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. There are a lot of spirits that are detected within the scriptures. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know that many of these spirits operated through people. Therefore, they took on the names of these people. Praise God. Like the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit is actually a demon. But it operated through Jezebel. That's why we call it the Jezebel spirit. Because that's the spirit she operated in. Amen. Come on. Look at her husband Ahab. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25. Look at Amen him. Ahab was one who allowed his wife to usurp authority over him. This is why we call it an effeminate spirit. Come on. That's why I challenge any man to never give your strength to women. I don't care how they scream. I don't care what they got on you. Praise God. Don't you ever let a woman Because that would make you effeminate. Amen. Because your wife would have taken your role and you would have taken hers. She would have become masculine and you would become effeminate. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because I can most certainly tell you, if you find Jezebel, you're going to find Ahab. Hello. If Jezebel do manifest and that man ain't no Ahab, Jehu, and he gonna cast down that unclean spirit that is in that woman. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Many unclean spirits that work through people that actually took on their names. Look at Cain. Praise God. Cain was a what? A murdering spirit. Amen. What caused Cain to murder his brother Abel? Praise God. He hated him. Because God accepted his brother's offering and he despised his sacrifice that he presented before God. Come on. Amen. And we see what happened there. We got a lot of people that have this spirit upon them. Amen. They got hatred in their heart. He that hated his brother is a murderer. That's the spirit of Cain. 
We have the same spirits operating in the world. Come on. We got black on black crime. White on white crime. Come on, that's the spirit of Cain. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? We get this in the church too. You got folks in the church talking about they are a child of God and yet they can't stand you. They can't stand one another. Hallelujah. They don't say all these good things in your face, but behind your back they're talking about you. They can't stand you. Deep down in their heart, they, they ain't got nothing for you. Hello, somebody. Praise God. And we can see that spirit in the scriptures in Genesis chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Look at, look at the spirit of Delilah. Delilah was a what? She was a, a spirit of seduction. A spirit of manipulation. Praise God. We saw how she seduced Samson. Correct? Right. Amen. And I want you to know this same spirit is operating in the church. Because just as Samson was a type and shadow of the church. Praise God. The same spirit of Delilah is seducing the church. Christianity is being seduced. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's why many people are bowing down. And departing from the faith, they're being seduced. Hallelujah. Amen. And we see that in Judges chapter 16. Praise God. Hallelujah. Athalia. You remember Athalia, praise God. Her son was the king of Israel. Amen. Glory to God. And even though her son was the king, she was controlling her son behind the scenes. She was the one giving him wicked counsel. She was the one influencing him to make the decisions that he made. To the point that when he died, you know what happened? The scripture says she took the throne. Hallelujah. And there has never, ever been a woman that sat on Israel's throne. Hallelujah. That woman was up on the throne illegally. Because before uh, anyone would take the throne, they would have to be anointed and consecrated into that position. And the valley she took it on her own whim. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. amen. A thousand. Amen. That's the spirit of manipulation. That's the spirit of control. One who gives wicked counsel. Amen. And even after her son had died, all of them that were on his staff, they feared her. Even to the point that when her son died, she took the throne and they became subject to her. Praise God. And the scripture says she had all the royal seed of Israel killed. Then she surely didn't want them rising up and taking their rightful position, which she had no business being on. But thank God there were some holy men that stood up and they threw her off the throne. And as they were throwing her off the throne, she cried out, treason, treason. Treason means to overthrow government. Amen. And, and, and the truth is, a value was the one that was committing treason because she was trying to overthrow God's government because God never set a woman on the throne. That was an illegal individual sitting on the throne of Israel. And thank God there was some holy men that threw her off the throne because she was never supposed to be there. Hallelujah. Athalia was a wicked woman. She was nothing more but a daughter of Jezebel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You'll find that over in 2 Kings chapter 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the spirit of Absalom. Absalom was one of the sons of David. But he was one of the sons of David. Praise God. That actually rebelled against him. Hallelujah. The spirit of Absalom is simply uh, one who sows discord among the brethren. Amen. Because he went throughout Israel, the scripture says, stealing the hearts of the men of Israel. 
And people were leaving David and coming out up under him. Right. Hello, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you'll see that over in 2 Samuel chapter 5, around verse 16. Praise God. See, see, see all these spirits? Yeah. That's, amen. And those same spirits are operating in people today. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and I can't even scratch the surface of the spirits that are at work in our society, within the home, within our educational system, as well as the Christian church. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. We can only scratch the surface on a lesson like this. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Look at the spirit of Balaam. Amen. Balaam was a, 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 a prophet, but he was a greedy prophet. Right. Amen. You find that over in Numbers chapter 22. This same Balaam, praise God, uh, was the one, amen, who had the donkey. Amen. <laughs> praise God. And when that donkey saw that angel, and that donkey wouldn't move, praise God. He rather bowed down. Balaam began to beat the donkey, praise God. And God opened up the mouth of the donkey, and the scripture says he spake with a man's voice, praise God, to warn him of the angel. Because that angel was going to kill him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Balaam was known as the greedy prophet. And we know we got a lot of them today, don't we? Oh, yes, sir, the spirit of Balaam. It's everywhere. But, you know, we can't detect these things because, you know, we're too busy doing other things that are unfruitful. They are not profiting your soul, and they're not getting you closer to God. Hallelujah. But these spirits are at work, and they are uh, bewitching the minds of them within Christendom, and many people are falling away from the faith. And many that fall away from the faith, they still attend some kind of church, but in their heart, they have gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They have drifted far away. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The spirit of Korah. Amen. Korah was one of uh, the men that was in the congregation of Israel that came out of Egypt. Praise God. Korah was a Hebrew. Praise God. But yet, him along with Abiram and Dathan began to rise up against the true man of God, Moses, whom God had ordained. Praise God. Kor is one who is called a gainsayer. Right. A gainsayer is someone who always contradicting the truth. Amen. We got a lot of them in the church. They're always contradicting God's word. They don't even care what the Bible says. They think it's what they believe and what they think, and uh, that, that's what they, that's that, that that's a spirit of Korah. Praise God. Korah is a gainsayer. He's one who contradicts the truth. He's one who opposes authority. Hallelujah. You see that so plain within the scriptures. You can go over to Numbers chapter 26 and you'll see that. Praise God. And you know what happened to Korah when he was in the wilderness? While Moses was up there in the mountain receiving those Ten Commandments, when Moses came down, you know what God did? Amen. He brought judgment on many of the children of Israel. And the scripture says he opened up the earth and swallowed 23,000 of his own people. And Korah was one of them. That's why you got to be careful contradicting God's word. Opposing authority. People have no idea of the spirit that is on them and have them manifesting the same characteristics as these ungodly men and women in the scripture. Amen. Come on. Amen. Look at Judas. Praise God. Judas was a betrayer. Hallelujah. You can only find a faithful man. Ain't that what David said in the Psalms? Yeah. Praise God. The godly man sees it. And a faithful man who can find and an unfaithful man in the time of trouble is like a broken tooth in the foot out of joint. Come on. You can hardly find a virtuous woman. That's why Solomon said in Proverbs 31, who can find a virtuous woman whose price is far above rubies? You can hardly find it. Come on. It's like a needle in a haystack. Come on. Amen. Judas 
are betraying Jesus for other things. Many people are betraying Jesus for many other things. See, in their corrupted mind, they are not betraying Jesus. Because in their hearts, they love Jesus. In their hearts, you know, they're Christians. See, when you have your own brand of Christianity, then you think there's nothing wrong with your ungodly behavior. You can live contrary to God's word. You can believe things that are not even scriptural, praise God, and yet you think nothing's wrong with it. You know why? Because you have a false Jesus, a false gospel. You have a false Christianity, which teaches you that you can do those things and so-called be saved. That's why the Apostle Paul said, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he said there's some that preach another Jesus. There's some that believe in another Jesus. They think that Jesus is the real Jesus, and that's not even him. Hallelujah. There's some that preach another gospel. There's some that actually believe in a false gospel and have no idea they are believing a false gospel. Look at the false doctrine they believe. Hallelujah. And the scripture said they have received another spirit. They don't have the Holy Ghost. Because the scripture says in John chapter 16 and verse 13 that when the spirit of truth comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. He's not going to guide you into falsehood. He's going to guide you into all truth. And yes, I know that truth hurts sometimes. But come on, it stings. It hurts. But it's good medicine. See that spirit is on? That's the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You find that in Luke chapter 22. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Now let me share this. There's nothing worse than a religious spirit. Nothing worse than that. Nothing worse than people that just full of dead man's religion. Hallelujah. This is why people live the way they live, but you know I'm saved. I don't have to change my life, but I'm saved. Right. I can keep doing whatever I want to do, but yet I believe in Jesus, and I'm saved. Hallelujah. They don't have no saved characteristics. They don't have no godly fruit bearing on their tree or anything. Never mind what Jesus said, if you abide in me and I in you, and you will bring forth much fruit, and your fruit shall remain. Never mind what that says. Even though I'm not bearing any good fruit on my tree, the person of Jesus Christ is not manifesting in my life by the Holy Ghost. I'm still saved. Come on, I don't have to submit to authority. I don't have to obey the doctrines, the bylaws, the principles of Scripture. I'm just saying, you know why? Because I feel I am. Amen. See, these are people that's full of dead man's religion. Ain't that what uh, the Apostle Paul brought out? Now see, this is what you call a Pharisee. A Pharisee. Because the Pharisee, they reject the words of God, but you know, they, they say. That's, that's how a lot of people are in the church. They don't care what the word of God said. Hmm? They'll quote it only when it's good for them. See, the Pharisees quoted scripture, but they didn't live it. Hallelujah. The Pharisees uh, knew the law, but yet they rejected the lawgiver. Amen. It is something when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came. Huh? Yeah. They rejected him, didn't they? Yeah. But I'm saved. Hallelujah. How can you be saved and you rejecting Jesus? You rejected the validity of Scripture. You're just taking the, the instructions that God has given us and cast it behind your back. The Apostle Paul made it very clear in 1 Timothy. He made it very clear. And I want to read that real quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mind you, it's 2 Timothy chapter 3. Listen to what he says. 
He says in verse 5 how they have a form of godliness. See, they just have a form. They're not really godly. They're not really righteous. See, they went about to, us to establish their own righteousness, but they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Come on. They just have a form of godliness. Much of what they do is to be seen of men. They're seeking their own glory. Praise God. I'm saved, but I can't receive correction. Yet the Hebrew writer teaches us, uh, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither, re neither faith when thou art rebuked of him. And yet we have so many people in the house of God talking about, I'm saved, I'm a child of God. Yet the scripture tells you uh, that if you uh, despise chastening, uh, you are bastard and not a son. Now, how is it that these people are saved, but they, they, they do not want nobody correcting them? Amen. You try to correct them? Come on. Amen. One scripture says in Proverbs, if you rebuke a fool, you'll get a blot. You're always getting that backlash. They always got something to say. See, that's a fool. You see the characteristics they bear? Yeah. They're showing you who they are. They're not really saved. They still operating under the law. They still had that old sinful nature. They have not repented and received the Holy Ghost. That's going to give them power over that sinful nature. Come on. You need the grace of God. That's what you need. Praise his holy name. He said in the text, having a form of godliness. How do we know they have a form of godliness? Because they deny the power thereof. The power that is speaking of in this verse is the word of God. How are people so saved? And when they hear the truth of God ministered, they seem to take those words and cast it behind their back. You never see it manifest in their lives anywhere. See, these are people that just have a fall. I don't care if they quote scripture. I don't care if they can tell you what the Bible said. The Pharisees was doing all of that. Pharisees knew the law from, from the back to the front of their hand. But they didn't obey it. We have many from the pulpit to the back door that do the same thing today. They have a what? Religious spirit. They don't have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Because you have a relationship with God, you're going to live by every word. When it's time for God to correct you, you're going to bow your head in humility and just receive the correction. No back talk. No back talking in your mind. No getting with somebody else. Amen. Hell hoping that they'll strengthen you. Amen. In your wrongdoing and make you think you're right. Come on, somebody. Am I telling the truth in this house? Come on. See, this is about being saved. Hallelujah. He says they have a form of godliness, but did not the power thereof. From such turn away. You see what the Apostle Paul was telling the saints? When you continue to see this behavior among them that's supposed to be born again, he said, from such turn away. When you see they won't repent, when you see they won't humble themselves and set their house in order, but continue in their wicked behavior, praise God, even after being reproved about it, he said, from such, turn away. Leave them alone. Don't mean you don't love them. He said, leave them alone. That's God's instruction. Come on. They need to be what? Delivered unto Satan. So that he might what? Buffet them. That hopefully he may, he may drive them back to their knees when they begin to call on Jesus. And he may save them. Come on. We see that in 1 Corinthians. Where the apostle Paul delivered them to Satan. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is serious. See that? That's that religious spirit. You can also find it in the entire chapter, Matthew chapter 23. See how they did things to be seen of men. Even Jesus said, don't be like the hypocrites, right? He said, when they do their alms, they do it to what? Be seen of men. 
And Jesus said, you already have your reward. He said, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites. He said, don't disfigure your faces to appear as if you fasted, as if you want some sympathy from other people. Praise God. Because he said, when you fast, anoint your head with oil and wash your face. Why do I need to wash my face? Because when I anoint my head, the oil will run down. So I need to wash my face. Praise God. And I go to the Lord in secret. And when you go to God in secret, you begin to petition him. When you begin to seek his face. Come on. When you really begin to open up your But he said, don't be like the hypocrites, because when you, when you, when you behave in that manner, and you, he says, you're really looking for your own glory. And Jesus said, when you do that, he said, you have your reward. Amen. That's why everything we do, we got to do it Hallelujah. secretly. Not to be seen of men, because we want men to give us some accolades. Oh, y'all do it good. Uh, we all want people to give us some accolades. Hallelujah. See, the love of God never seeks its own glory. Oh, you know what he said in 1 Corinthians 13? Charity never seeks its own. Huh? When you when you led by the Spirit, you always led to glorify Christ. Always. You ain't looking for nothing. You ain't looking for somebody to tell you how good you preach. You ain't looking for somebody to tell you how good you sing. You ain't looking for somebody to give you some accolades. Praise God. So you don't look for that. Now, if somebody was just to come up to you and say, Sister, praise God. I appreciate you. I, I thank God for letting them use you. So you give God the praise. So you ain't looking for that. Praise God. Because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, he said, he said, let another man praise thee and not thy own mouth, a stranger and not thy own lips. Praise God. You ain't looking for it. But when somebody comes to encourage you, that's a whole different story. You ain't looking for it. You ain't going sitting down asking people what does y'all think. You ain't asking anything. Amen. We ain't looking for man's approval. Yeah. I want to know that God accept my sacrifice. Yeah. I want to know that God hear my prayers. Come on. Because yeah. man ain't got nothing for me but a migraine headache. Thank you, Jesus. We can even look at particular cities throughout the scriptures. Amen. How many know that Sodom was an actual city in the scriptures? Praise God. And it had a suburb called Gomorrah. Hallelujah. Sodom was the big city. Gomorrah was the outlying suburb city. Praise God. But we understand the activity that was going on in Sodom. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. That's why they were called Sodomites. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we understand the ungodly behavior that was going on. When you're dealing with a Sodomite, you're dealing with that which is unnatural. Unnatural affection. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Praise God. You did, you're talking about sexual immorality. You're dealing with sodomy. Praise God. And we got a lot of sodomites in the world today. You can go to Genesis chapter 18 and Genesis 19. Praise God. Even the book of Jude talks about how many went after strange flesh. Praise God. That's people that are unnatural. They, they have unnatural affections. It's not natural. It's not natural for a man to have affections for another man. It's not natural for a woman to have affections with another woman. It's not natural for a human being to have affections for an animal. It's called bestiality. Praise God. And all of that was going on in Sodom. It's not natural for a grown man to desire a little child. And yet that was going on in Sodom. Child sex slaves. You had Come on. Amen. You're not talking to me. Amen. Amen. Masturbation. Praise God. It's sodomy. Amen. Come on. Oh, that's where all that come from. Anal sex. Come on. Oral 
sex. That's where it all comes from. It is unnatural. How many know the belly is for the meat and the meat is for the belly? But the truth is the truth. There are many things that are going on in our society that is unnatural. It's the spirit of Sodom. Hallelujah. Amen. There's another city that is talked about throughout the uh, scripture. It's called Babylon. Babylon was a city built by Nimrod in Genesis chapter 11. He built it in the plains of Shinar, that tower of Babel. Praise God. Babylon means the gate of the gods. Hallelujah. Amen. And every idol god came out of this gate. And remember that behind every idol god is really a demon spirit. So when you're worshiping idols, you're really worshiping demons. No, you can't see the demon. Praise God. Be for, for looking at the idol that you're actually worshiping. Come on, somebody. Unless that demon actually manifests himself to you, you will never even know you're actually worshiping demons. Praise God. That's why I thank God that when righteous kings would take Israel's throne, after, a, after a, an unrighteous king had been there and allowed Baal worship into the land, the scriptures say when the righteous man would take the, the righteous king would take the throne, he would cast out Baal worship out of Israel. And you know what he was doing? He was really casting out devils. And he restored the true worship of God in the land. Come on. Hallelujah. Babylon represented idolatry, pagan customs, hallelujah, every world religion came or has its roots rather in Babylon. Every world religion other than true Christianity which is rightfully called biblical holiness. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Every false religion has its roots in Babylon. Isn't it amazing that even in many of these denominational Christian churches, what do you see? You see Babylon. Every time a holler, a pagan holiday come up, what do you see within these Christian churches? Babylon. Look at many of the doctrines that are being taught. Look where they came from. Babylon. Hallelujah. You can look at church steeples. Babylon. Praise God. Some churches still have the old church bells. Yeah. Hallelujah. All that came out of Babylon. They used to ring the church bells to summon all the bell worships to come into the temple and worship Baal. But, of course, it infiltrated into the Christian church, and now they got church bells. That means it's time for church. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Praise God. You better hear me. Many have no idea where a lot of things come from. That's why we got to do some, some excavating. We got to do some digging and find out where things come from so we can know the spirit of truth from the spirit of error. Praise God. So when you really want to be saved, you got to make this your business. Because Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, and the Apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, to take heed that no man deceive you, because we're talking about the eternal destination of your soul. Amen. Come on. That makes sense. Amen. So you got to be careful of that spirit. Babylon. That's why we oppose it like we do. That's why we come against many of the things that you see within our society and has long infiltrated the church. This is why we come against these things. Praise God, because they are not of God. They were never birthed by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. They have no business in the worship of the Almighty. God will never accept it. You may accept it. The world may accept it. Praise God. Churches that have been tainted may have accepted it, but God Almighty will never accept it because His Word condemns it. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All these spirits
spirits today. Amen. In, 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 in Luke chapter 13, verse 32, Jesus called Herod a fox. You know why he called him a fox? Because Herod was a sly individual. Huh? Come on. Yeah, look at these spirits on people. You got some sly people. You even got people that do things on the sly. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing, but they're doing it on the sly. You are, you are sly fox. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's what Jesus called Herod. He called him a fox because he was sly. Amen. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 46, and on the day of judgment, he, he spoke to those that were on his left hand and he called them goats. Uh -huh. Praise God. Because a goat is a stubborn and a rebellious animal. And what do we see with a lot of individuals today? They're the same way. They will not change. I don't care what you try to teach them. I don't care what you try uh, to help them with. You can encourage them until your eye color change. They will not change. You know why? Because they think they're already right. They think everything is wrong with everybody else and they are already right even though they're bearing ungodly characteristics throughout their everyday life. Amen. And people like that will never change. They are set in their ways. I believe the apostle Paul brings that out in 2 Timothy chapter 3. He said, in the last days perilous times shall come. He said, many will become heads. Head is them uh, stubborn, bullheaded people. They ain't listen to nobody. Hallelujah. And those people never change. Never change. Ten years can go by, they're still the same. Twenty years can go by, they, they, they still the same. Even after coming to the house of God, all the years, they, there's still no changes. They still bear these ungodly characteristics. There's no way those people are following Jesus. There is no way those people are dying to the flesh on a day-to-day -day basis. They are actually telling on themselves, and they don't even know it. They think that everybody's called them on it, and nobody can really see them for who they really are. Amen. Praise God. This is why we need discernment, Amen. because you would never be able to know the difference. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the prophet Isaiah called... Various men, dogs. <laughs> In Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10 and 11, he called them greedy dogs. Now, I know we dealt with Balaam, praise God, and an individual of that nature, praise God, has the spirit of Balaam, but I just want to bring that out because there are people who the prophet of God labeled them as a dog. Even the apostle Paul labeled some Jews, some unbelieving Jews, some vicious men. He labeled them dogs in, in that particular uh, book in Philippians. He said, beware of dogs. He was talking about men. That's the spirit they had. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Dogs are not only greedy animals, Praise God. But they can be vicious as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's some false prophets as well, and I think we already called this one out a little earlier. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, as well as Ezekiel chapter 22, he, took, he called some, some false prophets he called them wolves in sheep's clothing. But, but their nature was a wolf. See, that's, a, that's an unclean spirit. You go to Ezekiel chapter 22, he said, the, he said the princes and the priests, they, they have ravened the prey. Hallelujah. That's what, a, that's, that's what a, a wolf does. He ravens his prey. He devours the flock. He comes to destroy the people and take whatever they had that he desires. Amen. Praise God. Are you hearing me? Amen. In Acts chapter 16, we see 
the woman who had the spirit of divination. Amen? Amen. The word divination comes from the Greek word putona. It's where we get the word python. Now look at all these, 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 these animals that people are given, given their characteristics because they actually behave in the same manner as these animals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see that? Amen. You don't believe that, do you? Uh, come, come on. I, I, just, I just talked about the Pharisees. In Matthew 23 and verse 33, Jesus called these religious people serpents and vipers. Huh? Amen. We know that serpents, they are seductive. They are vicious. Praise God. Just like a dog is greedy and vicious. Serpents are seductive and they are vicious. Yes, they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Religious people can appear to be nice, but man, they will snap on you in the drop of a hat. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 through 14, he talks about them who had familiar spirits. And familiar spirits are spirits that are familiar with you. Praise God. And they begin to operate in various forms of witchcraft, like, you know, necromancy and charmers and all other different forms of witchcraft. Praise God. And when they begin to tell you their fortune and they may get something right, you be like, oh. Because it's the scripture calls it a familiar spirit. It's right. a spirit that's what? Familiar with you. You got to remember, them, them demons have been around for a long time. And what does, what, what does a, a demon, praise God, is likened unto what? A wolf. He's likened unto a dragon. In Revelation chapter 12, these are creatures of war. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Even a, a serpent is a creature of war. And they are all predators. And what does a predator do? A predator studies his prey. He don't just attack you all at once. He studies you and waits for the right moment to attack you. Come on. Praise God. You better hear me. The devil is studying us. Waiting for the right moment to attack us. That's why he knows all your weakness. He knows your weakness. He's been studying you all this time. It's called a familiar spirit. Huh? Amen. You forgot this is warfare. The Apostle Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise God. We forgot. And we just went on about this life, yet we forgot all about the nature of the battle which is a spiritual war. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the, the things that we need within our lives as being a part of the body of Christ is the spirit of discernment. Because you ain't going to be able to detect anything. You ain't going to be able to pick up anything. Because it's a revelation gift. It's something that God reveals. If God don't reveal it, you'll never know it. You'll never know it. You never will. You'll never know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll never know it. You just walk around thinking you know stuff. And you don't know anything. How can you know anything if God don't show it to you? Amen. And in order for you to operate in this spiritual gift, you got to have the Holy Ghost. You gotta have a, 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 a prayer language in, in the spirit. Hello, somebody. Because that opens up the doorway for you to access the gift of discerning the spirit. Other than that, you walk around thinking you know this. You can be guessing this stuff all the time. And God ain't told you to guess. Because you keep guessing, you're gonna tap into uh, the spirit realm. Praise God. And I'm not talking about uh, the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about you're going to step on un, uh, 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 unholy ground and you begin to operate in witchcraft.
thinking it's, it's the Holy Ghost. God told me this. God showed me that. And here you now operating in fortune telling. Amen. You trying to discern. You really reading people. Come on somebody. Amen. 